Greetings everyone! You're watching the channel Aviation Obsession. How did Boeing, a small seaplane company from Seattle, go on to revolutionize air travel and shape the aviation industry as we know it? In this series, we are going to explore the incredible evolution of Boeing from its early beginnings to the game-changing modern aircraft. Get ready to be inspired by a story of innovation, determination, and the relentless pursuit of excellence. Don't miss out on episode 1 of our series on the evolution of Boeing. But before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon for future uploads. Without further ado, let's get started. Let's travel back to 1909, when a young William Boeing had his first airplane experience. This encounter was a turning point in his life, and in 1916, he founded Aero Products Company, which later became Boeing Airplane Company. That same year, he built his first airplane, the B&W seaplane, made of wood, linen, and wire with just a 52-foot wingspan. Imagine flying in something that small. It's incredible to see how far Boeing has come since those humble beginnings. Did you know that William Boeing's first plane was called Blue Bill? He took it on its maiden flight on June 15, 1916, and it could carry two passengers while reaching a top speed of 75 miles per hour. It even set a one-day record by flying 306 miles, but get this, he only ever built two units of this aircraft. The second aircraft he designed was a Model C, which was a game-changer for the company. You see, at the time, the United States was way behind Europe when it came to military airplanes. Great Britain had 400, Germany had 1,000, and France had a whopping 1,400, while the U.S. only had 23. That's a huge gap, right? But Boeing landed a contract to make 50 Model C airplanes for $116,000. Now, that might not sound like much, but with inflation, that's over $2 million in today's money. This was a huge milestone for the company and marked their first major financial success. After World War I, Boeing shifted its focus to developing commercial aircraft, and the company's very first commercial plane took to the skies on December 27, 1919. It was called the B-1C plane and could carry a pilot, two passengers, and even some mail or cargo. They only made one of these planes, but it went on to have a pretty impressive career, flying a total of 350,000 miles. It's hard to imagine flying on a plane that covered that much distance back in those days. Boeing started making fighter planes for the U.S. Army in the 1920s and quickly became a leader in the industry. Their PW-9 fighter was the fastest plane of its time with a top speed of 159 miles per hour. And they even had an aerobatics team called the 3 Seahawks. But that's not all. They also designed a mail plane called the Model 40. The U.S. Post Office loved it and even had it modified to carry passengers. In total, 77 Model 40s were built between 1925 and 1932. Boeing's focus on passenger travel really took off in 1928 with the introduction of the Model 80. It was America's first airliner designed for passenger comfort and convenience, carrying 12 people. The Model 80A was then released with even more passenger capacity, carrying 18 people. These planes had powerful Pratt and Whitney Hornet engines that allowed for a top speed of 138 miles per hour and a range of 460 miles. This was a major step forward in the aviation industry and helped pave the way for the development of commercial air travel. Did you know that the first female flight attendants owed their careers to a nurse who convinced Boeing managers that women could handle the job? And speaking of Boeing, they introduced a game-changing airplane in 1930 called the Monomill. This all-metal monoplane had retractable landing gear and set the stage for many future Boeing models. One such model was the YB-9 bomber, which was faster than the fighters of its time at 186 miles per hour and could carry a whopping 2,400-pound bomb load. Sadly, only seven of these powerful planes were ever built. Back in 1930, Boeing teamed up with some big-shot aircraft companies like United Airlines, Pratt & Whitney, and Hamilton Standard among many others to form United Aircraft. This merger gave them a massive monopoly in all kinds of aviation markets, but it didn't last long, and in 1934, they were forced to break up into three smaller companies due to a new law. This made William Boeing, the founder, say bye-bye and sell his shares. The P-26 P-Shooter was an important milestone for Boeing, being the first all-metal fighter aircraft produced in the U.S. It was faster than previous biplane fighters and famous for its flight formations. Boeing built 151 of these planes, 
which were used extensively by the U.S. Army Air Corps. Another impressive aircraft developed by Boeing was the Model 247, which was introduced in 1933. It was the first modern passenger airliner and made the trip between New York and Los Angeles seven hours faster than any previous flight. This feat was made possible by the airplane's two powerful 500-horsepower engines, which enabled it to reach a speed of 200 miles per hour. Boeing built a total of 75 Model 247 planes. The Boeing 314, or Clipper, was a flying boat that revolutionized travel in 1938. It was massive, with room for 10 crew members and 74 passengers, and had luxurious amenities, dressing rooms, and even a bridal suite, at a cost of $675 for a one-way trip from New York to Southampton. It was the epitome of luxury travel. Even President Franklin D. Roosevelt loved flying on the Clipper and even celebrated his birthday on it. With four powerful 1,500-horsepower engines, the Clipper could reach a top speed of 199 miles per hour and have a range of 5,200 miles. Sadly, a fatal accident occurred in 1943 during a landing, and 24 passengers and crew lost their lives. After the Clipper's success, Boeing started working on a design study for the U.S. Army to create a heavy bomber with a 5,000-mile range. It was the biggest and heaviest airplane the U.S. had ever made at the time, with flight engineers able to climb into the wings to fix things while it was in flight. Although it was only used as a cargo plane, this monster set records left and right, including carrying a whopping 31,000-pound load 8,200 feet in the air in 1939. It faced some challenges, like fires and electrical issues, but still flew until 1944, earning the nickname Grandpappy. In 1938, Boeing released the Game Changer, the Model 307 Stratoliner. It was the first ever plane with a pressurized cabin, enabling it to fly above many weather disturbances up to 20,000 feet. This baby had room for 33 passengers, and they only made 10 of them, so it was a rare sight, although they were ahead of their time. The last remaining Stratoliner was recently restored and is on display in a museum after being stored in the Arizona desert for two decades. During World War II, Boeing was an aircraft production powerhouse for the U.S., churning out a whopping 350 planes every month. Their most iconic aircraft was the B-17, a.k.a. the Flying Fortress, which was armed with five machine guns and bombs. The B-17E was the first model produced in large numbers, and it was equipped with nine machine guns and could carry a 4,000-pound bomb load. As the war intensified, more armor and weapons were added to the bombers. The Japanese even called it the four-engine fighter because it was so tough and could stay in the air. Even after taking heavy damage, the B-17 was produced in nearly 7,000 units, with Douglas and Lockheed building another 5,745. Another impressive Boeing plane from that era was the B-29, which had remote-controlled guns. Boeing was definitely flying high. The B-29 Super Fortress was the ultimate bomber of its time. With a range of 5,830 miles, it packed a massive punch with 12 50-caliber machine guns and could carry a 20,000-pound bomb load. The Super Fortress led the charge in bombing Japan, where up to 1,000 of them bombed Tokyo at the same time. But its biggest moment came when it dropped the world's first atomic bomb on Hiroshima. Three days later, another B-29 dropped another atomic bomb on Nagasaki. And just like that, World War II was over. With 2,766 planes built, the Super Fortress is a true icon of World War II. It is the only airplane in history to have ever dropped nuclear bombs during combat. Let's hope it stays that way. Am I right? Boeing was in a pickle after World War II since the demand for military aircraft had dropped, and they had to let go of 70,000 employees. To survive, they decided to get back in the commercial game and create a new long-range airliner the 377 Stratocruiser. It was based on a military transport plane and could carry up to 100 people. In 1945, Pan America made history by ordering 20 Stratocruisers for a whopping $24.5 million. Boeing tried to get into the commercial market with the luxurious Stratocruiser, which had bunk beds for sleeping. Unfortunately, it didn't sell as well as they had hoped, and only 56 were made. But Boeing didn't give up. They took a big risk and spent a whopping $16 million on the Dash 80, a passenger jet with jet propulsion. Even though they had no committed customers, they went for it anyway. Only one was built, but it made over 1,600 flights before being donated to a museum. 
Have you ever wondered how the world of air travel changed forever with the development of the Boeing 707? In the next episode, we will dive deep into the history of this game-changing aircraft and explore some of the biggest and most advanced passenger planes that have ever taken to the skies. Trust us, you don't want to miss it. So stay tuned for episode 2 and get ready to soar to new heights. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button and remember to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to leave a comment below if you have any suggestions or a certain topic to discuss for the next video.